Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. So in our last video, we learned complete theory of subprocess component in SOA 12C, its benefits and its limitations, what, how many types of subprocesses we have. We also did a demo of uh, inline subprocess. So if you haven't seen that video yet, I highly recommend you guys to see that first. Uh, I'll put a link of that video in the description and you can also find that in, in our SOA tutorial playlist. And in this video, we will do a demo on how you can create and use standalone process. So before the demo, let's see what is the main difference between inline and standalone sub process and when to use what. So as you can see on your screen, inline sub process is used within same people. As you must have seen in the last video also when we created an inline sub process, how it can be used within the same people. However, a standalone sub process can be used in multiple beeples within one composite. In our last video, under the limitations of sub process, we shared that you cannot use a sub process within multiple composites, but standalone sub process can be used by multiple beeples within one composite. So most common use case of standalone sub process is that uh, imagine you have a SOA composite where the input message first goes to a mediator and mediator is connected with three, three different people processes and based on a certain criteria your mediator is sending that request to one of the beeples and all those beeples have a common code that they are referencing to uh, and that common code that common set of activities and business logic can be written in a standalone sub process and all three beeples can call the same sub process and this will help immensely in reusing that common code that all the beeples can share and definitely standalone sub process is way more popular than inline sub process so while working with standalone sub process there are a couple of important concepts that you will need to keep in mind copy by rule and copy by reference it's similar to as we have call by value and call by reference in almost all programming languages so in layman term if we use copy by value then only value will be assigned to the variable and your original people variable will not be updated however if you don't use copy by value then your original people variable value will be updated it's like sending the value or sending the address memory location uh, whenever you are doing the assignment and if i dare to even more simplify this for you then for sub process input variables you can use copy by value but for output variables don't use copy by values because you would want to update the calling processors variable value so don't worry i mean if it's a bit confusing don't worry we will be using both of them in our demo and if you would want to dig a dig deeper into what exactly call by value and call by references a bit of knowledge of pointers in programming language will help you understand this concept in a, on a deeper level all right then uh let's let's start the demo so as you can see on our screen this is the demo that we created in our last video in line sub process demo let's create another project for standalone sub process demo empty composite works for me and I want to use the same schema that I used in the last video so I'm just copying this code and creating this schema Okay. 
so i just want to copy the element section of this so just this and it works like a charm so our logic will remain same we'll get a name and age from the user we'll check the age if it is uh, more or equal to 18 we'll say it's a valid user otherwise it's an invalid user uh, but this time we will use a standalone uh, sub process so let's create a beeper process So till now we haven't done anything different last time while creating inline sub process we created an if logic something like that here uh, on age but this time we want to write that logic in our sub process uh, so for that what we'll do is let's go to the go back to the composite You can insert your sub process here from the components, right click and sub process, or you can go to co components and drag and drop the sub process like this. You can give a name to your sub process, let's say standalone sub process. And now you will witness that in your people, there will be a S people file will be created. So let's click on OK. As you can see, standalone sub process s people file is created, but for inline, as you can see, there was no separate component. That's why it was inline sub process. And now this is a standalone sub process and can be referred by multiple peoples. Now, and inside this, if you look at this, it would look a bit like a blank people process, and more or less it is more like a blank people process which can be called within a people process like in osb we can call different procs uh different pipelines right so here uh, as you as you can see we don't have any variables so the variables that we have in our people are not part of our standalone sub process so we'll have to create our own variables and then do the assignments and during the assignments that concept of copy by value and copy by reference will come in to the picture so let's create variables here let's say name where i'll call that as string I'll create another variable for age of integer type and we have a result where as well which will be the output of this uh, standalone sub process for us which will also be of a string type. Great. So now we'll have to assume that in name where we will get the name, in age we'll get the age and whatever result that we want to send, we will send it in the result variable. So let's add if condition. So we are saying if age is greater than equal to 18 then it's a valid scenario 
otherwise it's an invalid scenario now let's assign the values assign result so for valid scenario we want to concat name with is valid user right and we can copy this paste into else and we can change the in valid user valid so as of now we have written the logic but we have not yet assigned the age name value which this sub process is expecting as an input because the whole logic is based on that right so in people we can do call so as you can see we have an oracle extension call so this calls a sub process right let me select stand alone sub process also because we have a sub process here now under our results we can see that we have a standalone sub process altogether so if we drag and drop this it's nothing but a call operation only it just uh, it automatically selects that sub process so if you have many sub processes then it's easier to simply search the name of your sub process drag and drop it and it automatically uh, points to that sub process only now now here it is name where age where and result where so in the beginning of our video i i was explaining you what this copy by value means so if i uncheck this that means it automatically refers to copy by reference so when we say copy by value and we assign a value to it let's say we we give expression that name should be this and in my sub process i decide to update that name so if input is James and in my sub process, I changed the value to James Bond, then that value is changed only for my local variable. It is not changed for this input variable. Input variable value will still remain uh, James. That's what copy by value means. However, copy by reference means, uh, for example, if i assign a variable value here like this i'll have to update this anyways so by this i'm saying that whatever result variable that i am assigning will update the value of output variable right i hope this makes it clear but if if not then thumb rule is in in your inputs copy just the value and in your output because you would want to change the output of your people variable you can use this uh, as copy by value so under here we'll give the expression of age here okay now one more thing that you that you must have noticed is if i select this copy by reference then expression is graded out so we have to have a variable which we are assigning to so at this moment if you see result where is a string variable and output where is an element i variable so best practice is you create inside your people you create a temporary variable to hold the output uh, of your standalone uh, sub process so temp standalone output where it's like a temporary variable which 
matches the data type of your output of your standalone. Here you go. And inside this, we can update that variable to our temporary variable like this. So by this, what we are saying is give me the name, age, I'll execute some logic and then I'll update your temporary variable. If I select this, then temporary variable will not be able to modify this temporary variable from the result of our sub process. That's why we'll have to uncheck this and we are copying by the reference by the particular location. Apply OK. And now if this call is successful and we are getting the result back from standalone, that means our temporary variable must be assigned with the output value variable or value of standalone domain. So here assign output to our result. Apply OK. Let's deploy this and test it if this logic is working or not. All right, so it is deployed. Now let's go to our EM and test the service. All right, as we can see, standalone sub process demo is uh, deployed. Let's test it. James is a valid user. So if you notice now this logic in inline, we had the whole logic in our people. It just we sort of encapsulated that in an inline sub process but this time the whole logic was outside people we only simply called that sub process so if we check the flow here we can see it calls the standalone it starts executes and then under here this is a sub process which checks the age the same logic that we have implemented and this is able to update our uh, temporary variable and simply it assigns here and it returns the result. Let's just test the negative scenario as well once. There's an invalid user. So it is working absolutely as expected. Now let me show you uh, how we can actually call this from multiple beeples, right? Because that's the main reason why would someone would want to use a standalone over an inline sub process. So in here, if you see, uh, we have this wire dotted line from uh, standalone uh, people to standalone sub process, right? Suppose you are working with the service where there are multiple beeples either uh, being connected to a mediator or there are multiple endpoints of your same service. For example, I create quickly create a synchronous process just like this, right? And then here also I can call my standalone process like this. And if I now see the composite, you can see multiple people processes are calling this particular uh, sub process. So that's it. I mean, um, I hope you guys learned everything that is there to learn in the sub process. It's a very handy option whenever you would want to use the code reusability, code modularity and stuff like that. Thank you so much for your time. Take good care of yourselves and have a nice rest of the day. Take care. Bye bye.